Well, hi guys, welcome back to Spare Room. It's Emma again, this is part 9 and this is the engine build I think. And we need a crankshaft. I've got a piece of quarter in silver steel and that's a pretty nice fit through there. And we've got a flywheel that goes on it. On this side. And we've got a bit of 2 mil sheet steel. This has a pin which is tap 4BA. With a bush on it and a screw for the for the main crank pin, and it has a press fit pin in the back side that touches against this big flange, and the eccentric runs between them between the crank and the flange. It's really quite neatly designed. I'm a bit impressed with this. So order of operations will be to describe a line on here with the high gauge, and mark three holes on here ream one for the for the eccentric pin which comes back through the back and tap the opposite one for the crank pin which just says a little bush and a, and a screw and tap the middle one 2BA to match this and then cut him out when we've got that discs we'll set this up in the fore jaw nice and true and thread him and screw this on, machine it to size face the front, take him off knock the pin in and screw it back on back to front and machine the pin length and then I think turn him back to back round and, and put him together properly so that's a pretty simple little project for today it's blowing a gale out there. I think it's going to rain again. I've just brought all the towels in, which isn't all that much fun because it's still damp. But we'll see how we go. Now let's get ahead and mark this out. So there we go. That's the two marks. This one's 312 thou, and this one's 350. and a circle that's a little bit bigger than an inch to cut him out to so so all these holes want to be pretty square to the sheet so I'm going to set him up in the fore jaw and drill and ream one hole and tap the other hole and tap that hole then we can file him to a rough shape and we can screw him on the on the crankshaft and machine him Let's cut him out. We'll just cut him out square and set him up in the fore jaw. So I marked this with my new scribe, which is made by Randy Richards. If you were thinking about whether you should get one or not, you should. It's a really nice tool. It's carbide. Nice and sharp. Nice to hold. It's got your name on it. Drop him an email, go over to his channel and drop him an email. I think he's still making them. He would be pretty keen to sell you one and it's a really nice tool. Good tools are pretty hard to find. Here's a pro tip. I've set this up flat rather than long ways. Which seems a bit strange. But if you want to hacksaw cut to a line... If you set it up this way, it's much easier than if you set it up on edge and try and watch the watch the line because you saw it will wander this way a lot easier than it'll wander this way. So I'm just going to chop that off. And then we've got another four jaw set up. Same deal. We've done this many times before. What I have done is got a piece of piece of tool seal and just fit it in the back there to keep it nice and straight while I set it up. It's just high speed steel and makes a good little parallel. Don't rely on two of them until you've measured them because they don't all tend to be the same size and some of them are different size one way to another way. If you've got a mark, match pair that's alright but when you're only using one of them that's pretty straightforward. 90 degree spot drill again and I am. 
Um, at some point I'll find a nice single point spot drill and that's what it really needs but until that happens this is what I'm living with watch Stefan Gottswinter's recent video and his amazing channel uh, he had a good video on spot drills and center drills single point drills D bits and things just recently really worth a look so it's a shout out to Stefan great guy jump on his channel and subscribe so let's fire this up Now I'm tapping this 2BA for a couple of reasons. One is a sheet metal and a 42 degree thread angle is probably the strongest and best to do the job. Second reason is that it's what the drawing says and we might as well stick to that. Third reason is that I like to think, keep things uniform across the project. And as I've found before many times, that there's not a huge range of, of metric bolts that look any good. So you can use metric if you like. 2BA I've got and it's going to work. I've got a set of number drills and I've got a set of BA taps and dies. Yeah, metric's alright, but you can't get the fine threads and you can't get a thread that feels like it's meant to be there, if that makes sense. So this is 2BA, the other one's 4BA which is a bit smaller, we'll make sure we get the right one to set him up and we'll do the other one now. So there we have it, we've got a 2BA hole in the middle and a 4BA on that side for the crank pin which is just a little bush with a screw in it, it's pretty smart and it's easy. This one's reamed. Um, for a press in pin which goes in the back. I guess the next job is to cut these down to size and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna cut them off a bit with a hacksaw so that we don't get quite such an interrupted cut when I'm turning it. I think I trust the thread and everything else but I'm sort of not gonna put too much strain on it. We need to set up this nice and true in the fore jaw. I'll cut a piece to length. We'll set him up nice and true in the fore jaw and we'll machine the piece down on the end and make a thread to screw that on. And screw him in nice and tight against the against the back there and machine him off afterwards. So that's starting to come together. So set that up to run true in the fore jaw and I've put a piece of wet and dry paper around there as well with the tail sticking out through the jaws just so that we don't get too many marks on this piece of shafting for the for the bearings that's fairly important I've set that up to within about three tenths something like that it's a bit closer than that maybe so there's no run out much and as this isn't coming out until basically this crankshaft somewhere near complete it really isn't all that critical but we got it right the next job is to face this and turn it down to threading size for 2BA which I'm going to have to look up on the computer because I haven't got a clue what it is 
I've got tapping size on my chart. I'd better have a look for that. So tapping size is under or, or outside diameter is 185,000. That's pretty straightforward. I've machined that down. I've put quite a quite a taper on the end because we're only using about two millimeters of this thread. So a good taper to start. It won't hurt. I found a 2BA button die and wound the the tail stock up to to touch on that. And some cutting oil on there won't hurt. That's tap magic. Love it. Good stuff for everything. I use it for turning. It's a little bit expensive maybe. But a little tin of it goes a long way and it doesn't stink. Whereas Rokol and some of those are terrible. So that's got our 47 degree thread on there. I did say 42 before. It was a typo before someone puts a comment about it. It's 47 and a half for BA, which is quite steep still. That looks like that's going to go on there without too much wobble at all, which we like. It's a little bit of a land here, and I'm going to just undercut that a bit so that this screws right up against the shoulder so that it screws on nice and tight and firm. And that's nice, that's nice and true. And clean the outside up just so it's inch diameter. Very, very light cuts. And it's going to need a bit more than that, but fine, let's do it. So next job's the crank pin. I've actually gone through and adjusted these main bearings because that's what the noise was. And I wasn't real happy with that, so this might be fraction tight now, but it's running all right. I think it's pretty sweet. But I found an eighth collar and we've chucked up a piece of brass rod. We're just going to turn the end of it down because the hole that we reamed was three millimeters whereas this shaft is one eighth it's 0.2 millimeter over it needs to be the right size on the piece that sticks out because otherwise your your timing is going to be out of fraction it's one or two degrees anyway so let's put a step on this that's going to press into that crank and cut him off and press him in let's go a bit quicker there I think that's going to go in there nice. A little bit of a taper on one end. A nice fine file. And I'll cut him off with a hacksaw, we'll push him in and we'll assemble him all ready to machine again. So I've just screwed that back on there the wrong way around. I did check this shaft, it's been in the forge all along and I just unscrewed it and took it off and put it back on. But I have checked it again and it was about half a thou out or something like that this time and I've sorted it out again. Um, I'll put this on back to front and we just need to machine this down just under the thickness of this because our centric is the same thickness. So all that's got to do is catch on there, on each side, there, and when we turn it, it catches again on that side and reverses it. So what we need to do is machine that off so that it's just under very very gently the important thing and I've said this a few times this video series but the important thing about getting a nice accurate sweet running engine is to check stuff so 
just keep checking don't take too much off it because once you have to do something again you get a bit disheartened check things that are running true and check things that are tight and check things for and check the drawings another cut there won't hurt that's pretty sweet let's take that little burr off there We'll get a piece of rag and unscrew that because it will be tight again. And that's what our pin looks like. It's just under flush on that side and a nice press fit, so that's pretty sweet. Now before I assemble this, there's another job that I've done that I did off camera and I didn't think to record it. But what I've done is measured the overall length and marked it and then machined it to length on the other end on the same settings with the four jaw. So I've turned it around. And that goes on there like that. Nice and tight, nice and true. What an incredible bit of design. I really... I'm fairly impressed with the way that's gone together. So we've got the front of the crank and the back of the crank with the pin in it. And this end's been faced off nice. So I guess the only the only bit to do is to put him to put him together. This still has an eccentric to go in here. Whereas this means that this has to be sticking out a little bit further. The flywheel goes on that end. And that's what the crankshaft looks like. So thanks for watching guys and girls. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that stuff. Don't say it enough but it's awesome to get comments. And be kind to each other. More soon.